Hi guys, this is uh, Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. Uh, and this short video is uh, in the series of videos uh, dealing with probability. And more importantly, we're going to concentrate on the multiplication rule. Okay? So what we probably should do for us is we should provide a definition okay, uh, of the multiplication rule. Um, and what it says to us is this, is that the probability of A and B happening, okay, is simply equal to the product of the individual probability. So it's equal to the probability of A times the probability of B. But this is only the case when both A and B are events that are independent of each other. Okay, so this is the independent, the independent case. Okay. Uh, when events A and B are not independent of each other, okay, we have to make a, a small modification. Okay? So what we do is the probability of A and B, knowing that A and B are not independent of each other, is simply equal to the probability of A uh, times the probability of B, knowing or conditioned or conditioned on A. Okay? So maybe just to, maybe so that we can sort of get our head around this, what we'll do is we'll we'll do an example, okay? Uh, and let's say for for argument's sake that we had uh, two hundred employees within a particular organisation, uh, and the employees were rated or measured with respect to their technical performance in the job, technical performance, okay, performance. And also in relation to their interpersonal skills, okay. uh, so let's say interpersonal personal skills. Okay. Uh, with respect to technical performance, you could be appraised to be poor, to have poor technical performance, uh, reasonable, okay. uh, or good. Right, so you would receive one of these three categories with respect to your technical performance appraisal. Uh, with respect to your interpersonal skills, you could be classified as below average, below average, average, yeah, or above average. In this example, we're assuming that we had 200 employees, so you're going to fall into one of nine categories, okay, let's do this here, and let's just say for argument's sake we have this down here, so what we have, let's say for argument's sake, is that 10 employees were rated to have poor technical performance and below average interpersonal skills, let's say we had 20 that had below average and reasonable, 30 that had below average and good, 20, 40, 30, let's say 10, let's say 20, which gives us a total of uh, 10, 30, 60, 80, 120, 150, 160, 170, 180, so let's say there was 20 in here, giving us a total number of employees of 200 employees within this organization. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna randomly select people from this particular uh, cohort of 200 employees okay, uh, and ask what is the likelihood of us selecting certain individuals that have certain characteristics with respect to technical performance and interpersonal skills. Okay? So let's say we randomly let's say we randomly choose let's say two people okay two people and I'm going to say with replacement, okay, with replacement, okay. That means that after I choose the first person, the first person is put back into the mix and I choose the second person, okay. And what I'm interested in is what's the probability, okay, that the first person selected, okay, uh, has below average, let's say below average, interpersonal skills, okay, and the second person, okay, selected has, let's say, above average, above average interpersonal skills, okay. Because this is and, okay, okay we're interested in characteristic 
associated with the first one and some other characteristic associated with the second person okay well what this allows us to do is I suppose what this uh, indicates to us is that we're dealing with the multiplication rule okay two versions of it the independent case and the non-independent case okay so what we need to try to figure out is after we do the first selection okay and it comes to the second selection when we do the first selection we can choose an individual from 200 individuals yeah okay and we put that individual back in the mix and then when it gets to the second person the second selection has been made randomly from also 200 individuals so actually what we notice between the first and the second I suppose selections is that the sample space has not changed okay? that's an indication for us to I suppose that's our, the trigger for us to indicate that the two events that we're dealing with are independent of each other okay now if it was without replacement okay? that is after we select the first individual from the 200 we don't put the first individual back into the mix well the sample space has changed in size because there's only 199 individuals left to choose from okay so let's keep that in mind in, in which case if it was without replacement okay we would be into the second version of of the law here okay or of the rule okay uh, which requires us to take into consideration this conditional probability this would be in this case the probability that the second person selected is above average knowing that the first person selected was below average okay but in this particular situation okay, the probability that we're interested in okay the probability of the first person is below average and the second is above average is simply the product of the individual probabilities so this probability okay uh, becomes the probability that the first is below average average times the probability that the second is above so what's the probability that the first person is below average oh, well how many people in the mix okay how many people of the 200 people are are below average okay? well we have everybody along this particular row here okay would have the condition below average so there's 10 30 60 people below average so the probability of us selecting okay probability of us selecting somebody that's below average would be we have 60 chances out of the total amount that we could select from which is 200 okay and that needs to be multiplied by the probability okay that the second person is above average okay now don't forget we've put the person back into the mix so there's still 200 people here okay so there's nobody missing okay we still have the full complement of people that we started with so the probability that we select somebody now that's above average is off this row here which is 10 30 50 so we have 50 chances 50 chances out of 200 okay for selecting somebody that's above average okay uh, which gives us I suppose that's 30 chances out of 400 which is we have three chances in 40 of selecting two people and the first person being below average and the second person being above average okay let's redo this example okay okay but let's say that we do this example without replacement okay so let's say we do it with without replacement okay. in which case uh, we still to calculate a product of probabilities okay uh, but the first probability will be the same so without replacement this becomes the probability that the first person selected is below average let's say below times the probability that the second the second person is above knowing that the first person was below okay uh, okay so the probability that the first person is below okay, is as it was previously there is 60 below average individuals so there's 60 below average individuals out of a total of 200 so this probability becomes it is 
60 out of 200. And let's multiply by the probability that the second is above. And don't forget, the first pair 